23-year-old California native Felicia Marie Johnson went to Houston, Texas and disappeared on April 15, 2022. She is 5 feet 4 inches tall, weighs 150 pounds, has long black hair and brown eyes. She has a large butterfly tattoo with two roses on her right shoulder. Her family has been looking for her ever since. Her father, Kevin Johnson, joins us from Houston. Mr. Johnson, I'm sorry you are going through this. What can you tell us about the night your daughter went missing and how the search is going? Well, the night that she went missing, she was sharing location with uh, some family members and they noticed that her phone hadn't moved in some time and uh, they was able to locate the phone uh, the next day. And uh, we tried to take the phone to the police and uh, they refused to take the phone into evidence. Hmm. Uh, so for the viewers who are unfamiliar with, with your daughter's story, can you give us a little bit more background around the circumstances of her disappearance? I know that she was in Houston. I believe she was celebrating her birthday or something along those lines. Can you just give the viewers a little bit more information? Oh, yeah, she was um, celebrating her birthday week uh, on Sunday in San Diego with the family. Uh, we had just celebrated a birthday dinner with her. And uh, later on in the week, she had came out here to Houston to uh, further celebrate with some family members. And I guess uh, she wanted to make some money while she was here. And that's how she ended up at that, uh, that nightclub. And uh, that's the last time she was seen. And that was um, Saturday morning, which would be the 16th, I believe, or the 15th. Okay. And you said that the Houston police were not necessarily willing to take into account her phone that was found. From what I read, they, I don't know if it was them or the FBI, but they have, they conducted a search around the area where her phone is found. Are you satisfied with the level of involvement from the Houston Police Department or with the FBI? Well, actually, the family member of ours uh, is the one that found the phone mm -hmm. through, through certain location. And we took the phone to the police station and they refused the phone. Right. Uh, and a week later, after I had acquired some help from uh, Quanell X, that's when they took the, the evidence. Five, five days after us attempting to give it to them on the day of her of disappearance. And uh, as far as uh, the search efforts, I, you know, there are a lot of people that's volunteering their time and uh, Texas Equisearch is helping and uh, Crime Stoppers is helping. But as far as the law enforcement, I have just all questions and no answers. And yes. we're like three weeks in. Um, I don't even confirm or deny her identity at this point. Oh. You know, I have been able to confirm or deny her de identity on surveillance footage. Right. Um, I gave my DNA to them to confirm with the blood that was on the phone, if it was hers. I still don't even know if the results from that. Right. So, I, I noticed that the Houston Police Department and even the FBI, the statements that they've been given is that it's an ongoing investigation. And they've been very tight-lipped with releasing details. Do you think if they were more forthcoming with details that that would help bring your daughter home faster? Uh, I, I, you know, just for the family to have some kind of information at this point, which we're almost a month into the investigation and we have nothing... I mean, something would, would be able to help us, to help them. We've been doing our own investigations uh, via social media and through our own, you know, contacts uh, through the streets or whatever. But, um, of course, I feel like if they would uh, give us something, then that we'd be able to help. Well, you make a good point, too, because, I mean, even if they weren't to publicly release data, um, our information, there's no reason why I can think of that they wouldn't be more forthcoming with the actual family um, and at least hoping, you know, you guys be assured that they are taking every step that they can to bring your daughter back home. Um, tell the viewers a little bit more about your daughter. I, I want people to get a, a better sense of her personality. I know that she's so special to your family and we don't often get a chance to hear about, um, you know, people like your daughter when these circumstances arise. Yeah, she was just like, you know, like my mom, rest in peace. Like, uh, just, she would light up a room, uh, very, outspoken, intelligent, beautiful, 
like like she was an inspiring model, very good with hair and makeup, kids. She didn't have any kids, but she was good with her brothers and her all her siblings. She was like kind of like another mom to them because she was the oldest. So right. just a beautiful person. She sounds like she's a, she is a beautiful person. For the viewers watching, what would you, what what do you want for them to do? What can they do to help get involved in the search or as support your efforts? I saw that there was a GoFundMe. Uh, what what do you think that people can do to help push the story to the forefront? Um, you know, just I don't know what they can do. Like. Um, if anybody is in the Houston area or in the Texas area and they would like to, you know, volunteer their time to actually actively search for her. But there are multiple agencies that are on the job right now as far as the FBI, the Houston PD. Um, I also have the Sheila Jackson Lee, the congresswoman. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I know I didn't want to say her name, but. I'm just excited to have some people to help to help me in the search for my daughter. You know, um, I don't feel like the police have been doing their job. I don't feel like uh, as a father that they've been, um, I feel like they've been violating my rights, you know, because um, anything that I've asked, nobody said anything to me and they've just all been very hush hush about it. And it's obvious that there's something going on here. Does your family have any kind of legal representation to help you sort through this process? No, no, we don't yet, but we are looking into that. And if anybody can reach out to me uh, with any suggestions, I'm, I'm open to it. Yes, that's the kind of stuff that hopefully we have people watching who can help volunteer their services or steer you in the right direction. What's the best way of getting in contact with you or with, you know, whoever you think, feel like is the right person to contact to aid in your daughter's uh, search? Um, you can email me at uh, Kevin20069 at gmail.com. I, you know, I think that's the best way to contact me via email. And uh, I will try to respond to people as quickly as possible. Okay. Um, you know, I'm going to bring in the panel to see if they have any questions. Are you willing to take questions from the panel? Okay, great. All right, uh, we're coming into the Ask You Questions. We're gonna start off with Dr. Julianne Malvo. She's the Dean of College and Ethnic Studies. And we also have California State University, Dr. Omekongo and Dibinga, I'm so sorry if I messed that up, Professor Lecturer School of International Service, Uni American University, Reverend Jeffrey Carr, Jeff Carr, founder of Infinity Fellowship. Starting with you, Dr. Malvo, do you have a question for Mr. Johnson? I guess, Mr. Johnson, you've shared a lot about your daughter and her personality. She sounds like an absolutely lovely person, and we're really sorry that you're not able to track her down. Other than the police who haven't been very responsive or the FBI, have there been other law enforcement agencies, sheriffs, others, or have you considered the possibility of a private investigator? Uh, we have hired uh, numerous private investigators, but nobody is able to come up with any answers. Uh, as far as any constables or sheriffs, nobody else is involved that I know of. Mr. Johnson, I have a question because I know that there, um, your daughter, you believe she was last seen at the uh, at this nightclub where she ha was, uh, you know, trying to get a job. And I've seen some conflicting reports from the employees. From what I read, it seems like they have a recollection of her being there and leaving with a customer. Yet mm. the club itself contends that sh they don't have any record of her being there in terms of surveillance. Uh, what do you make of the disconnect or the discrepancies? Well, the Davari brothers, uh, have numerous criminal charges against them amongst sex trafficking and uh, employing minors. So it doesn't surprise me that they were able to operate in the dark without any surveillance cameras because they claim that their cameras don't work. And I don't see how any establishment can operate in the dark uh, in this day and age that we live in, unless there's something else going on there. As far as the employees, we've got conflicting stories, misleading information, um, just all kind of stuff. It, this has been a crazy, crazy situation. Yeah, it, it sounds just like 
the most infuriating circumstances when you're getting different stories and it's hard mm. to tell what the motivations are behind getting conflicting stories. Um, right. is, have you heard from any customers who were there that night who might recall anything? Oh. Um, no, I haven't heard. Nobody will talk to me. Okay. Nobody, like I said, it's a hush-hush on many levels. The hotel, the police, um, any, okay. nobody's talking. Okay. Nobody's talking. And it's been three weeks. The police haven't gotten any answers from people. I mean, I don't know who can. Right. At this point. I'm going to go to Dr. Dabinga. Do you have a question for Mr. Johnson? Well, first of all, uh, Mr. Johnson, I, I really want, as a father myself, um, I really want to commend you for your, your poise um, during this time. And as we work to spread information about it from here, where I'm at in D.C. And, and where we're all over the country, what are you and your family doing three weeks into this to, to, to hold your spirits up? I mean, I, I really cannot comprehend what you're going through right now, but at the same time, I'm seeing such such poise from you. What are you and your family doing to maintain your, your spirits at this moment? Just keeping our faith in, you know, the most high. And, you know, I know that uh, this is uh, the fight of my life. Um, I'm getting strength from within, from my ancestors, from, you know, people that's uh, protecting me and, and holding me and holding me up at this time. And uh, I'm just just the love I have for my daughter that I will not quit until I find answers. And I just there's I can't there's just I, I'm in a place where I've never been. I'm in unforeign territory with my own self. And I'm just a man of faith walking one day at a time. Yes, and my family is doing the same. Amen to that, Mr. Johnson. Speaking of a man of faith, um, I'll go to Reverend Carr. Do you have a question for Mr. Johnson? I can't hear him. I think we're working on his audio right now. Okay. Uh, Reverend Carr, you're muted. Can you unmute? I think you... Okay, we're still working on it. Okay. Okay, sorry. Um, you, uh, you held a vigil um, yesterday for your daughter, and um, I, I know that you appealed to Mayor Turner um, to get him involved. Uh, have you considered at all appealing to the various mayoral candidates? I know that there is a big race uh, for Houston mayor coming up, and there's it's a competitive race. Um, this okay. is certainly one of those things where they would, you know, they should also be weighing in and, and trying to put their resources behind it. So have you considered that at all, or what ha kind of response have you gotten if you have reached out to anybody? I, I actually am just considering it right now since you're telling me. Okay. <laughs> so that's something that um, I'm going to have to... Uh, put into motion uh i have some uh a busy week so i gotta meet with the authorities and have some meetings with them to see what direction this case is going to go in to what sorry about that oh no no you don't have to apologize at all um i think do we have reverend Carr back? Okay, we're still working on that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, you know, I hate to get political, but at the same time, I know that you mentioned uh, you know, activist Quanell X and the impact that made in terms of the Houston PD getting more involved. Um, right. And so, you know, you, with it being an election year, there's no harm in reaching out to people who, who really have a microphone and who could potentially be elected to these positions of power and authority. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the, the way that activist uh, groups have, you know, um, helped you out in this and, you know, just give us a little bit of insight into that. You know, um, they're really influential in just getting the ball rolling. Before, when I had just like a, I just had like a basic private investigator, he got nowhere. Hmm. I heard Cornell X. Next thing you know, the police got involved. They took the phone. Um, all where I'm at, where I'm at today, because of him, because of, he helped me. I'm no lie. I understand that um, you know a lot of people give him a bad rap, but as a desperate man, I'm telling you that he helped me. 
Well, a rap doesn't make a difference when you're looking for your daughter. It doesn't matter. Help is, you're going to take the help that you can get and you want results. It's not about reputations and all that kind right. of stuff. So, you know, that's really amazing that he got involved. We have Reverend yeah. Carr back. Reverend Carr, uh, your question or comment for Mr. Johnson? Yes, first and foremost, you guys can hear me now, I think. Yes, we can hear yes, you. Sir. Yes, sir. Great. Brother Johnson, man, first and foremost, uh, thank you for your patience and thank you for your willingness to step outside of traditional circles. Uh, we know there's a lot of pressure right now to make this happen, and sometimes that pressure will come from law enforcement, but other times right. spirit and ancestors will send you people, places, and things to help you in this quest to find your daughter. And I've got a daughter around the same age. She's the oldest man. She's into the same kind of things. But I want you to understand that right now with you, you have thousands of people who are sending their energy your way and they're sending the energy towards you to complete this mission to find your daughter and to bring her home. So keep that in mind, keep that in your heart, stay strong, stay lifted and know that we're all with you. Kevin2069, is that the email? At Gmail. Sure. All right, I'm going to put this on and I'm going to ask a question so people can see that they can screenshot that. Call this okay. man, send this man is it your information. Is there a way uh, that people can contribute to any kind of fund that can help you from around the world? Uh, if you need to investigate, as Sister Malvo said, find a private investigator. If you need resources to help your family, find other community partners. Uh, aside from email, is there a site set up? Or if not, how can we yeah, get to you? Yeah, I, I have a GoFundMe, I have a GoFundMe um, set up that's on my Facebook page. Uh, my Facebook is uh, Kevin, Kevin Lino, K-E-V-A-L-E-N-O, Johnson, J-O-H-N-S-O-N, at uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Kevin, Kevin Lino Johnson. That's my Facebook. All right. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Stay strong. I will. I'm trying. Thank you. Mr. Johnson, we appreciate you for taking time out. I know that you have so much on your plate trying to find your daughter. As we all have said, our hearts are with you. Our support is with you. Please feel free to reach out and let us know if there's anything else that we can do. And hopefully we can get people to your GoFundMe. And if anybody has tips, um, you know, they'll get your information from your Facebook. But consider setting up a free website just to, you know, make it a little bit easier to get in contact with you. Okay, I'll 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 do that. Okay, you take care, Thank Mr. You. Johnson. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye -bye. All right, folks, Black Star Hold My Unfiltered Video in just one moment. Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. A real uh, revolutionary right now. <laughs> Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. we have now we have to keep this going the video looks phenomenal see this difference between black star network and black owned media and something like cnn you can't be black owned media and be skate it's time to be smart bring your eyeballs home you dig